General Assembly, starting with the general debate by the world leaders. This is the Super Bowl of diplomacy. This is the World Cup of diplomacy. You meet uh, all the leaders of the people. You discuss all the issues here. It's happening fast and furious, and no one wants to get left out. Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs, les chefs d'État, as we gather today in solidarity, those are only two changes. Yeah. Every GA speech is a punctuation point. The writing process usually takes three or four days. In this case, we probably worked for two straight weeks. So on Thursday morning at 9 o'clock, when the Secretary General steps before the cameras of the world, it will be showtime. Today, we are being tested. In all we do, let us send a clear message. There can be no peace without justice. I refuse to accept that peace. I have had uh, during the last 10 days 192 events, including 120 bilateral meetings with the head of state, head of government, and foreign ministers. If you took a normal event planner from the outside world and dropped them into the middle of GA week, they would go insane within 10 minutes. Just in time. <laughs> it's controlled chaos. I chaired the high-level meeting on Pakistan, high-level meeting on Sudan and Somalia. So a huge amount of work gets done, but also the opportunity for everyone to have a voice. You know, talking about the issues that they care about. Climate change and poverty issues, global health issues. So much business gets conducted because it is in a hothouse. It's in a crucible. So you can take what happened two meetings ago, which was only 20 minutes ago, and say, well, Prime Minister X told me this. What do you think, Mr. President? So it's a very exciting time. But on the other hand, it means a lot of preparation. People work almost around the clock. Not just the things that you see in terms of the speeches that get delivered, but the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. You know, those who are working to translate documents, those who work just to make sure that people are in the right place, the security and uh, everything else. And all of that leads to some really concrete outcomes. The Secretary General launched his uh, global strategy on uh, women's and children's health. We were able to mobilize $40 billion to reduce the mortality of women and the children who have been dying from preventable diseases. It's amazing to watch. One day he may give like 10 speeches and meeting with maybe 25, 30 different leaders, all different topics, different priorities. I wake up at 4 a.m. That gives me the best time 
uh, to prepare without any disruptions. Once I'm in the office, I do not have almost no private time. It's like I'm sitting on a conveyor belt. We've got uh, limited time. So we're delighted to have you. I have very limited time with my family members, unfortunately. I'm here with my youngest granddaughter. I am immensely grateful to my wife, my children, who have been very patient, understanding my uh, situation. He has 192 constituencies that he needs to look after, 192 nations with interests that he must fairly reflect. When I was a young child like you, there was no classrooms for me. I used to study outside on dirt. My background as a person who was born in a very poor country, whose country has risen as one of the 10th world economic power, then I can play a bridge role between developing and developed countries. I start every day, every morning, as if this is the first day in my office as Secretary General. He keeps pushing for the small progress that sooner or later he knows will lead to big progress, even breakthroughs. Thank you very much, Excellency. We have to show to the world UN not only talks, but also delivers. Each time I have met those uh, young uh, people who seemingly wouldn't have any hope, but who really wanted to have a hope from me, then you cannot but be humble how United Nations can, can do more for them. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.